Hi there, Grace Bible Church. Welcome to episode 53 of the Grace Shepherd's Memo. I've probably done about 100 takes of this this morning because my phone has been pinging and ringing off the hook. And I don't mind that because that means there's a lot of active things going on in the church these days. And we look forward with great anticipation to what our governor might be saying this afternoon to possibly allow us to regather this next weekend. So be in prayer with us over that. Yesterday in our Q&A with Pastor Steve, he talked so much about how we need to look when we regather and what this trial has done in our lives and what it should be doing in our hearts. Now, we're going to regather and people are going to look a little different. Our hair is all a little bit longer or some of us has buzzed it off. It's a little bit grayer for some of us. For some of us, we've added a few pounds. For some of us, we've removed a few pounds. Some of our children are a little bit taller. Well, one of the things, all those physical things will look different when we regather after two months. But how do we look differently from a spiritual maturity standpoint? In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 Moses writes to the people of Israel and he says, The Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart. The purpose of the trial of the wilderness time for the Israelites was to expose the sin in their hearts. And Pastor Steve alluded to that yesterday in, in our Q&A as well. Many of you know, because I've mentioned it before in our, in our, Q, in our Shepherd's Memos, that I use a devotional every morning from Voices from the Past, published by Banner of Truth. They have two volumes, and in volume one this morning, Thomas Case writes this, and I want to use this as an encouragement to you so that as we gather, you have a week, not just to try and hit the treadmill or go for a run outside and work off a tan, I don't know, whatever you do, but to also work in your heart even more this week so that you can come back spiritually mature. Thomas Cates Case writes this. In affliction, God reveals the unknown corruptions in the hearts of his people. What pride, impatience, unbelief, idolatry, distrust of God, murmuring, and unthankfulness. Sin lies very close and deep and is not easily discerned until the fire of affliction comes. The furnace discovers the dross. In the furnace, we see more corruption than was ever suspected. What self-love is there boiling and fretting within me? What pride, distrust of God, creature confidence, discontentment, murmuring, rising against the holy and righteous dispensations of God. Woe is me. What a heart I have. Affliction always brings old sins to remembrance. We are guilty of concerning our brother, it says in Genesis 42, 21. 20 years after they had sold him into slavery, Joseph's brothers recalled this in their affliction. Suffering times bring sin to mind. In affliction, he empties us of ourselves to make us fly to Jesus Christ for righteousness and strength. He lets us see what is crooked, that we might straighten it. What is weak, that we might strengthen it. What is lacking that we may supply it and what is lame that it may not be turned out of the way. Affliction also teaches us to pray. They that have never prayed before will pray in affliction. They will pray more frequently and fervently. David was always a man of prayer, but now under persecution, Psalm 109.4 tells us he did nothing else. It is sad to consider that in our peace and in our tranquility, we pray carelessly by fits and starts and let every trifle come before 
prayer. But in our affliction, God keeps us upon our knees. Christ himself, in agony, prayed more intensely, we read in Luke twenty-two forty-four. And so with David in Psalm 22, he gathered up all his strength to pray. And like a true son of Jehovah or of Jacob, wrestled with God and would not let him go until he got the blessing. May we not waste our time through this COVID-19 pandemic and these stay-at-home orders to not let the word of God prune our hearts of the sin that so easily has grown roots within it. I hope this is an encouragement to you, and I hope by God's grace and with a lot of prayer, we will be able to gather again on Sunday. And I look forward to to being able to see you all again face to face. May we grow in grace and grow in love as we grow in Christ. May God bless you.